Hello. In this last video on linear system identification using least squares, I would like to discuss the limitations of applying linear least squares to dynamical systems. In the previous video, we have already seen one major limitation, that is, if we apply ordinary least squares to a dynamical system, that we basically lose our blue properties, so the best linear unbiased estimator properties, because we have this measurement noise impact and due to the dynamical structure, due to the temporal structure of our data, that becomes also part of the regressor matrix and therefore we also have some correlation here in terms of Y and Z over the temporal domain and therefore we get problems if there is significant noise in the uh, state measurements. Okay. So therefore, we could see that it is able or we are able to apply least squares to linear dynamical systems, which are time invariant. However, there are some drawbacks depending on the noise level. What is the second limitation? The second limitation is basically that we considered we need state measurements, right? So we have assumed that we have direct access to X, however, as you hopefully remember during our fundamental videos on dynamical systems on the state space, we have the state dynamics governed by the famous discrete time equation xk plus 1 is equal axk plus b times u of k. However, in reality, there's also a measurement equation which says y of k, so the actual measurements are some mapping of the states and the inputs with additional parameters uh, in C and additional parameters in D. And we had assumed so far that this was basically the zero matrix and that this was the identity matrix. And if that is not the case, then we get problems to define Z, the regressor vector, right? So that is basically also a limitation that we need this direct access to the states because otherwise we cannot really directly assign the least squares problem, especially when it comes to the regressor vector, because we would need access to X in order to define especially this relation from X over C to Y. If we do not have direct access uh, to X, then of course we get problems because X is definitely a part of Z, and if that access is missing, we cannot define our least squares problem. So that is also a limitation, and especially for technical systems, but also for other domains like from biology or social sciences and so on, normally it is questionable if we have measurement uh, devices, sensors, or any kind of empirical uh, evaluation mechanism which is able to give us complete access to the states, right? So this is also a limitation because in these applications we would not be able to apply ordinary least, squ uh, least squares using this closed form solution. The last but not least, uh, yeah, the last limitation is that, of course, it is limited to linear systems, right? So, um, lim linear systems are, of course, uh, very nice in terms of the mathematical properties. They're easy to understand. However, in the reality, linear system representations are always just uh, a simplification over some operating points, over some little uh, part of the operating space of a certain system. So in reality, we normally have nonlinear systems, and you might remember our very simple mathematical pendulum example with the uh, angular uh, representation theta, where we had d x of t dt is equal to theta dot of t and theta do 2 dot of t, which was x2 
and minus one over L. L was the length of this uh, rod from some middle point uh, times sine of x1 of t times g minus b some uh, fraction, uh, some, some drag coefficient times x2 of t divided by m. And of course, this nonlinear right hand side is not something which I can represent uh, as a times x of t, which would be required to get into this linear ordinary least squares form, right? So if we have any kind of nonlinearity, we are not able to represent it in such a way, and therefore we are not able to build up our ordinary least squares problem. So therefore, um, ordinary least squares is a powerful tool, especially we can find closed form solutions using powerful numerical linear algebra toolboxes. However, we have three severe limitations. And therefore, in the following lecture series, we will discuss about techniques and opportunities which go deeper and which are especially able to be also applicable to nonlinear systems. And therefore, in the next lecture videos, we will discuss a lot about optimization on a general level in order to apply that optimization to systems where these limitations of ordinary least squares are important and where we will need numerical optimization techniques in the context of data science and machine learning in order to derive models from data. Having said that, we will end the ordinary least squares and its variants like weighted least squares and recursive least squares discussion here. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next videos on data science for dynamical systems.